Arches National Park is fun to visit, but you want to be prepared and there's no better way to prepare than by learning from the mistakes of others. We're Matt and Cheryl and we write travel guides for Arches and other cool places in the West. Today we're sharing mistakes we've made or seen others make, and we've even enlisted the help of our audience for mistakes that they've made. So let's get started. First mistake is, we're going to start with a very obvious thing here, and that is to get a reservation to visit Arches National Park. If you're visiting during the busy season, which is April 1st to October 31st, you need a timed reservation to enter the park between 7 a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. These reservations open up on a monthly basis three months out in advance. For example, on February 1st, the entire month of May will be available. But the good news is, is if you're not like a really good planner, and you're doing more of a last minute trip, they do open up a few the night before at seven o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And we've actually had some friends and neighbors that have been able to get in Arches by getting that night before reservation. Kristen Williams told us that the ranger told her that they have to turn away 10 to 20 cars every hour because they don't have a reservation. I was kind of relieved when they started this because the times before when we went, has the crowds had gone up, but they hadn't done anything. It was pretty frustrating trying to find a parking spot. So the next one is losing all hope if you didn't get a reservation. If you paid attention to what we were saying before, the reservation's only necessary 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you're a morning person, like get by all means, get up and get into the park before seven. You're gonna beat the heat. Or if you like to sleep in, four o'clock, you can go in after. And we've done this before. We we love to do this, actually. We'll go play in Moab or Canyonlands, and then we'll hit arches later on in the day. And it's really not that big of a deal if you don't get a reservation. Just pay attention to when the sun rises and sun sets for the days that you're going to be there so you know about how much daylight you'll have. Now, it's a small park, as Cheryl mentioned. So if you're like, oh, my gosh, well, if I can only enter after four, I'm not going to be able to see or do much. You actually can do a surprising amount in there because it's only about a half hour drive to the end of the park. And so you can do some nice walks. You could probably have time for one hike and, uh, and you can still drive all the way to the end of the park and see some viewpoints and maybe do an easy walk or two. And uh, you yeah, have a great visit if you enter after four. We did that, we did Delicate Arch after four o'clock and that was fantastic. Oh, and Amber Snell said, we skipped the time reservation and showed up at 4.15 with no line at all. The next mistake is thinking that Delica Arch viewpoint is good enough. Matthew Workman says, not hiking the Delica Arch trail is a big mistake. The two lower viewpoints were cool, but we felt like we missed out on that iconic viewpoint. We're going this October and we're making sure to do it this time. So Delica Arch has a hike to get there and then it has a viewpoint that you can drive to to look at it from the viewpoint. But it's in kind of a weird little area. The viewpoint couldn't get very close because there's a big cliff and gorge on the other side of Delicate Arch. And so you're kind of far away at the viewpoint. We really think that if you can, you should try to do the three mile hike to and from Delicate Arch. It is a bit of a butt kicker, but we think it's worth it. And stay tuned because we do have a few more little golden nuggets on how to do that Delicate Arch hike later on in this video. Next mistake is wandering off the trail. Now, I actually have to talk about this one a little bit because I've seen it, we've done it. If you're not familiar with desert hiking, it is easier than you think to wander off the trail. You might think <laughs> you're on the trail and you're not well, on the trail. Well, and that's because there's not a lot of vegetation. Like it's all desert. And so the trail just is not as obvious as it is in a wooded tree vegetation area. It was just pretty desolate. We were doing the Devil's Garden hike last year and we kind of found ourselves just a little bit off the trail and I looked over and there were some other people that were even farther off the trail. And uh, one of the things the park is trying to educate people about is something called desert soil crust. The soil is incredibly delicate. It doesn't look like much, but it's got kind of a crusty top to it. And that takes has taken thousands of years to develop. But when you step on it and smash it, it ruins thousands of years of nature's work. So stay on the trail. And then the other thing is they set up these rock cairns that uh, help guide you along as you are hiking. So if you see a little stack of rocks, that's something the rangers have set up. Yes, yeah, so you should always be able to see the net. Like if you get to a cairn, you should always be able to see the next cairn from there. And it's illegal to actually make other cairns or add to them. So just when you see those cairns, just don't touch them <laughs> and look for the next one. They also like you'll see dead wood laying across trails places. And it's not just there because it happened to fall there. A lot of times rangers will put that there to say that's not the way. And so if you're stepping over a piece of dead wood, you're probably getting off the trail. Even though it's a national park, the trails are really, for the most part, clearly marked. And you're going to see plenty of other people there. 
it's still possible that you could get in a situation where you wander off the trail. Okay, our next mistake, which is actually a pretty difficult one to make unless you're intentionally doing this, is walking on the arches. There's a rule in the park, I'm just gonna read it verbatim, it says, to promote visitor safety and the opportunity to view natural features undisturbed, climbing, scrambling, walking, or standing upon or repelling off of any arch is prohibited. This is not one of those parks where you're gonna be like wandering off the trail and all of a sudden you're on top of an arch. You have to like make an effort to climb one of these arches, but they're fragile. So there was a man named Dean Potter who was a rock climber, kind of a famous rock climber, and he climbed Delicate Arch back in the early 2000s when there was actually a little loophole and he didn't get in trouble for it because it was kind of legal. Uh, they've since closed that off. You can't climb any arches at all in the park. But I bring this up because I actually saw this happen. Now I saw this happen in Canyonlands. It wasn't in arches, but uh, Canyonlands has an arch called Mesa Arch. And uh, I was there visiting one day and it is crazy because it's right on the edge of this 1500 foot canyon. And a couple of people walked out onto the top of that arch. Meanwhile, there's a sign right there that says, you know, walking on the arch. I was actually telling them, hey, you, you're not supposed to be up there. You need to get down. And they just ignored me. I told them several times, actually. And if you are planning a trip to Arches National Park, we have got a lot of resources for you. This video is part of a bigger playlist that covers Arches, Canyonlands, and Moab. We also have a website that has tons of blog posts about how to visit these places. And we have a guide that we sell that includes Matt's awesome audio guide. Speaking of that, that's our next mistake is not reading Desert Solitaire by Edward Abbey, who was a park ranger at Arches back in the 1950s. He wrote the book, he became quite famous from the book, kind of became like a political call to arms maybe against things like over tourism and ruining wilderness and stuff like that. But when I read the book, I was more struck just by the incredible imagery and language that he uses to describe the desert. I just thought it was such a fantastic read. The desert's kind of close to my heart. We've, we've grown up going there. So I would just encourage you to read it and enjoy it before you go or after you go even because it's a really cool book. Okay, and this kind of leads me into my next mistake, which is underestimating the desert. Something to know about the desert is that it can get very cold at night and then blazing hot during the day. And one of our viewers mentioned, his, this is Zach Butler, said he noticed people wearing flip-flops and carrying one bottle of water for a family of five to Delicate Arch in July at noon. Now, Matt loves it when I go on my rampage about water, but I'm not wrong about this. Arches is exposed, and so there's not any shade. No. And that red rock that you're walking on, it is amazing at holding heat, and so that heat is radiating. There's not water spigots everywhere. Like when you go to Zion and you're hiking around, there's water spigots at a lot of those shuttle stops. That is not the case at Arches. Make sure to bring a hat for shade. I wear a cowboy hat and and uh, and I wear it with my t-shirt and shorts and I probably look ridiculous, but I love my cowboy hat because it gives me all that shade. Also, tons of water, of course, sunscreen. And then a lot of people do wear long sleeves and pants to protect them from the, the sun. I've never done that, but again, if I was going out there in 110 degree heat, which I won't, I probably would, I'd probably consider oh, yeah. doing that because it was just so, it, you'll just get roasted out there. So literally, as I was preparing this outline, the story popped up on my phone. So a father and a daughter, um, an adult daughter, at Canyonlands visiting from Wisconsin, and they got lost. They got off the trail. The park went out to do search and rescue, and they found them dead because they had been out there too long. And, and again, right now, this is the middle of the summer. It's over 100 degrees in these parks right now. And they were doing a really long hike. It's like an eight-mile hike. So really, really sad. In fact, it was the, the people dome where they were oh my going, around the, going around the dome. So take these to heart, really. I mean, I know it doesn't happen very often considering all the visitors. I don't think you're better than the desert. It can it can be anybody. Also, it's high elevation. Tim Tinsley, one of our viewers said, at 5,000 feet above, above sea level, for those sea level visitors, it can make hiking just that more difficult. Not as bad as the Rocky Mountains, but still still difficult for those who are not used to it for sure. The next one is not packing a picnic. As I mentioned before, like there's no water in the park. There's no restaurants either. I think some, some national parks spoil us and they have food places, but Arches is primitive and there's no food there. The good news is, is that since Arches is so small, you can kind of drive in and drive out pretty easily. And then that the gateway town of Moab is fairly close by. They do have a couple of picnic areas. We, Matt was nice and wrote it down. Oh yeah, so there's there's a picnic area at Balanced Rock and at Devil's Garden. That's at the end of the canyon where the campground is. But 
I have to say, like, if you were visiting in the summer, I guess what I would prefer to do is I would probably prefer to drive back into Moab. They have great food there, and it could be a nice respite from the heat if it's really, really hot. You know, if you're in the bumper seasons where it's not so hot, yeah, like pack a picnic, that's great. Yeah, that's but what just, usually do. Yeah, but, you know, if it's in the middle, if it's summer and you just need to get out of the heat for a little bit, lunchtime can be a good reprieve. Well, and take a little nap at your hotel or something mm -hmm. and then go back out in the evening. The next mistake here is skipping Canyonlands and Moab. So Canyonlands is like the Rodney Dangerfield of parks. <laughs> so uh, it has the unfortunate distinction of being right next to Arches. Where the last 10 to 15 years, Arches has exploded in popularity. People really love this park. Canyonlands now seems to be almost forgotten about oftentimes. So it gets no respect. It's the Rodney Dangerfield, I call it. We love, love, love Canyonlands. And... Amber Snell said the biggest mistake I can think of folks is skipping Canyonlands because it's so close and so amazing. Canyonlands has awesome like rugged hikes and it has, it's like going to the Grand Canyon, like a mini version of it. You're up there and you're looking down and you can see canyons for miles and it's home to the very scary Schaefer Trail, which Matt took us on last time we were there. <laughs> and then also the things to do in Moab. So some of the popular things to do are the Jeep rides. And we did a Jeep tour of Hell's Revenge that was absolutely unforgettable that you need to do. Uh, one of our riders who writes for our website, she has done the nighttime boat tour on the Colorado River. It's called Canyonlands by Day and Night, which we're gonna mm -hmm. try to do next time we go there. There's horseback riding, there's zip lining, there's uh, rappelling. Okay, so next mistake is underestimating the crowds. It's crowded because it's a small park. There's, there's a lot of visitors and so it kind of feels crowded. And Chuck Goodman, one of our viewers said, he said, go during the off season. I visited Arches last week of November and the temps were a little chilly in the mornings, but I was down to a t-shirt in the afternoon. And we love going in November too. The crowds really are kind of clearing out. March is a great time too. So we've been in March several times, but beware if you go there, like during the winter time when there's gonna be snow, make sure to bring spikes for your shoes. I biffed it on one of the hikes. I went sliding down on my, on my butt down the hill. Our next one is trying to do too much in one day. Tim Ferry, one of our viewers said, my problem was allowing enough time to get to everything. After the hike to Delica Arch, I was wiped out. I didn't have enough time to get to all the arches, the ones within walking distance on the trail from the parking lot. You know, you have to remember that you might be worn out from the heat or from, you know, exhaustion from a hike. So you might not be able to pack as much as you thought. And then also Miko Jasmine said, we tried to do arches and canyonlands in the same day, and I would suggest not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so they, so it's actually possible you could do that because arches is, again, it's only 30 minutes to the end of the park. And then it's about, I don't know, 30 or 40 minute drive over to canyonlands to see that. So it's actually possible to do both I of those in a day. I think if you're wanting to see it from the windshield. And that's certainly something we've come to appreciate a lot more as travelers is just Sometimes it's just nice to sit there and take it all in. Next mistake is only hiking Delica Arch. In our opinion, Delica Arch is the most beautiful arch in Arches National Park, but it is the worst hike. Yeah, literally every other hike in Arches is probably better than the Delica Arch hike. So we have compiled a list of the 10 best things to do in Arches National Park. Click that video here to watch it next. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, go West, Young Traveler.